Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Rock the Crockpot. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, why don't you tell us about your Crock-Pot recipe? Okay, I will. Um, <laughs> I'll say that this was a little bit of an unexpectedly difficult category for me. I ended up making a handful of recipes for this that turned out to just be kind of like meh, you know? including this one, but I feel like it does have potential. So that's why I'm sharing it with you today. And this is for Crock-Pot Christmas Breakfast Casserole. It's from the website restlesschipotle.com. And I was intrigued by this because when I was growing up, we always had breakfast casserole on Christmas, like without fail. That was a huge tradition in my family. But all of the breakfast casseroles that I've ever had or made have been baked. So I was interested to see how this one came out in the crock pot. Um, so basically, you just spray the inside of your crock pot with no stick cooking spray, set that aside. Then you mix up um, shredded cheddar cheese and shredded pepper jack cheese, set that aside. Then you cook up some sausage. I used a spicy breakfast sausage for this, which was really, really tasty. I definitely enjoyed that. Cook that, and then you mix in some diced onions and diced peppers. They used uh, red and green bell peppers. I used red bell peppers and jalapenos instead of the green peppers. Then you take a dozen eggs and you beat those until they're well blended. You whisk in milk, salt, pepper, and then this calls for two bags of shredded hash browns. So it's a very large recipe. It's for like a big crock pot. So you start by layering a third of those potatoes in the bottom of your crock pot. And then you put a third of your sausage mixture on top of that. Top that with a cup of your cheese. And you do that two more times. So you have three layers and you end with the shredded cheese on top. And then you pour in your egg mixture. Um, and you cook it on low for eight hours. So this is something that you could do overnight. You can have for brunch to, if you've got a timer on your crock pot. So I thought that was pretty interesting, like nice make ahead sort of thing. Um, but it was just kind of okay. It wasn't like super exciting. Um, definitely had like better breakfast casseroles, but I feel like it's definitely fixable. So what I would do the next time that I made this was reduce the amount of potatoes that it called for. So maybe take it down to like a bag and a half or even a bag of potatoes. This was like very potato heavy. There was like way too many. And then I would add some other stuff to make it a little bit more interesting, more onions and peppers. I think broccoli would be super good in this. And then uh, maybe some bacon bits for a little bit more flavor. I would add more cheese because that's just how I am with casseroles uh, and maybe just like a little bit of red pepper flake to just like spice it up a little bit more. And I think this would be really good. So I will definitely try this again. Uh, it'll be a little bit until I do because I've still got leftovers from when I made it. So, uh, But I, I think it could be good. Can you remind, where did the peppers come in? Were they with the sausage? Yeah, and you actually don't mix them in with the sausage. So you cook your sausage and then you put in your raw onions and your raw peppers. Okay. So they actually cook like in the crock pot while it, yeah. Okay. So okay. I thought that was interesting too, that you didn't like cook it with the sausage. And how I mean, much cheese? Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good. How mm -hmm. much cheese did it call for? So it's three cups total cheese. Okay. That's a good um, amount. It but is with a lot a of potatoes. Crock pot, and it was a lot of potatoes for that. So yeah, maybe you wouldn't really need to increase the cheese if you brought down the potato. The that oh. might help a lot. I think. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That, but was yeah. there was there any element of like the bottom potatoes getting it all like crispy? A, they got a little bit crispy, like on the outside, which okay. was 
tasty um it wasn't like burning or anything like i i like that little bit of texture yeah it was good that sounds good oh. all nice. right well beth tell us about your crock pot recipe i will and i want to say i veered yesterday i ended up making a recipe that i make all the time uh a, a lemony lentil soup and while i i had also made a breakfast sweet breakfast casserole but this lemony lentil soup was on my menu already and i realized i could make it in the crock pot so i did and you guys it's so simple and it's very tasty it's it's the kind of soup that you would get at a middle eastern restaurant um and you know i love lemon so i i mean it's two carrots diced and an onion they said a white onion diced uh and in the crock pot just put it in the crock pot um, a can of corn and, uh, or, you know, two thirds of a cup and uh, some spice. Look, wait, when you know, the lentils are the red lentils, which are actually orange, rinse those off, you know, um, and you put those in. Uh, so it's, and then it could be vegan. I ended up using uh, chicken broth, but it calls for six cups of broth. Um, all that goes in garlic oh six six uh things of garlic um and then at the end so you put all that in and it cooked for five and i put it five and a half hours and then at the end you add uh, the uh lemon zest of a lemon and the juice of a lemon and i, I had an extra half a lemon so i added that um salt and pepper and it needs i think a lot of salt but that was it oh and then this also i've made this so many times so, but over the years i mean it does call for um uh blending it or putting it in an emergent blender which i have typically done but the last time i made it um i kept it chunky and kurt really liked it like that so i decided this time too to just leave it as is so it's a little chunky, um, but it can go either way. You know, the smoothed out way that we're used to in restaurants or the chunky, it's still tasty. So yeah, super simple. It's from Gimme Some Oven. Uh, and I've had it bookmarked for years. Uh, so I was, I was hoping to share it someday. And I was really happy to be able to do it in the crock pot. So in the past, when you've made it, Beth, do you just make it on the stove top? Is that yep. what you're Okay. Yeah. So you saute cool. the uh, carrots and onions first in olive oil. So the only thing you omit in the crock pot is the olive oil. Um, and then it, it calls for uh, cumin. Uh, now I'm a little bit of, wait, cumin? Oh, the kind, a dash of cayenne. Sorry, there's something else I'm missing, but I'll give it to you when I give you some oven. <laughs> well, I love lemony uh, lentil soup. So this is an exciting recipe to me. I have to say I was a little thrown by the corn. I didn't realize that that's in there. Is that a traditional ingredient, do you think? Do you know? I don't know. I don't think it is. I mean, but this okay. woman um, said that she got this it takes her back to this Kansas city cafe, middle Eastern cafe. So, you know, who knows, but other, I'm glad you uh, brought that up because one time I, I, when we were getting a ton of corn with our CSA a couple years ago, I ended up um, uh, making a broth, a corn broth with it. And which is also a handy thing to do, but I made it for a, a chowder and, um, so I used that corn broth in this recipe before. So yeah, it's a great way to use it. And yeah. Wow, cool. I wouldn't have thought of that. Mm -hmm. And also uh, about not blending it too. Blending so it, yeah. It like it's, it's super versatile. It's vegan, it's gluten-free. And um, so I'm super pleased I was able to share it with you. And so now let us hear what Elizabeth made. Okay, so I... Um, I like the crock pot. I don't use it a lot, but I like it. 
Um, but similar to, I think, Katie, I kind of, um, I think you have to have find the right thing that works in it, you know? And I'm not sure that what I did was the right thing, but it was fine. So basically I found a recipe for crock pot Italian wedding soup. I love Italian wedding soup. So I was like, sure, let's give it a go. Um, but I modified it a bit. Um, I actually ended up combining <clears throat> several recipes um, just to make it appeal to me. So um, basically it's super easy. Take your crock pot, you get six chopped cloves of garlic, two um, carrots chopped, two celery stalks chopped, a yellow onion chopped, um, I had a Parmesan rind, you throw that in, you throw in a sprig of fresh rosemary, seven cups of chicken broth, um, a little bit of olive oil, um, teaspoon of onion powder, teaspoon of garlic powder, some red pepper flakes, um, juice of half a lemon, and then some salt and pepper. And you basically just cook that on low until everything is blended. This one recipe said six hours. Or sorry, not everything's blended till all the flavors are like put together. This recipe said six hours. That was fine. Um, and then you go back in and you stir in um, some greens. So I ended up using some baby kale from one of those like plastic things. That was fine. And then this is where I kind of deviated and did my own thing. One of the recipes I was looking at just called for um, like raw Italian sausage and you take it out of the casing and then you're just supposed to like pinch it in and put it in there to, for the meatballs. But I really wanted to make actual meatballs because I like meatballs. So I actually did the whole thing with a couple eggs and some breadcrumbs and some seasoning with Italian sausage. And I actually made meatballs. I know Italian wedding soup. Also, the meatballs are small. I was, I didn't have time for that. So <laughs> I made like the one, a different recipe I was looking at called for, like called for 80 meatballs that you're supposed to like form little, I don't do that. I made like 25 and they were just normal meatball size. So basically you throw those in at that point and um, you replace the lid and cook into, until the sausage is cooked through, which takes about an hour. And then if you're using pasta, which I did, you stir it in um, like 20 minutes before everything's done. So that's where I made kind of my mistake. I should have used couscous, but I didn't think of that. And so I got like very small pasta shells, but I put in too much. And so they really like absorbed up a lot of the good broth. And I was kicking myself because by the time I took the lid off at the end, it was more stew-like and it was just too much pasta. So that was my mistake. Um, and next time I would just use couscous anyway. Um, but anyway, then you basically store it. You take out the Parmesan rind, you discard the rosemary stem if you can find it. Um, I, much in the style of Beth, added a little squeeze of lemon juice on the top at the end. And it was very good. I guess I would say this would have been fine to do on the stove. Like I sometimes I struggle with this with crockpots. I guess the point is that you can do a lot of it while you're not there, you know? And that was true. Like I threw it all in the morning, go to work, come back. And then it's, you know, but also I think this could have probably been done in like an hour and a half total just on the stove. And it would have been just as good. Like, I'm not sure the crockpot itself lent that much to this soup. So I think it was very good. I'll probably do it again and make some modifications, but I may just do it on the stove. I'm unless, you know, I'm running out of time, then I guess that's why you use the crack pot. So anyway, I have a photo here of the bowl of soup and it looks super good. Um, oh, there's some grated Parmesan on top too. Um, but yeah, I think I'm still um, like trying to work on figuring out like what's good for the crock pot. And like what, you know, like what really is like the right thing to do in that versus just do normally. Using, so yeah, using it as a, when you don't really need to. Right. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, it was good though. Totally fine. And, you know, it is nice to have it cooking while you're gone. So yeah. Well, 
I just want to add one thing that Kurt ended up making, um, which was some taco chicken taco meat. So that was perfect for the mm. for the crock pot because we just he put the boneless chicken in the seasoning and let it cook. And then by the time we got home, it was shreddable. And so that's a super handy. I mean, we had not done that before. So um, there are things like that, that I think really come in handy. And this soup that I made again, you know, never having made in the crock pot, I would, I would now. Yeah. yeah. I, I was going to say that for me, like I found that doing meats in the crock pot is where it ends up being really worth it. Like if you're doing shredded chicken, or pork like that is just like it's such an easy way to do it and you just like put it in and forget about it yeah but yeah. I think that you're right like I found that too when I was going through these meta recipes where I'm like okay I did not need to pull the crock pot out for that like what was right. like there wasn't really right. a point to it because you can achieve the same thing in an hour on the stove so yeah right. I think that's a really good point there are things that are just trying to do without it but I think in the future, like I remember my mom used to make like a pot roast and that would make perfect yeah. sense because she oh, would yeah. put it in the morning and then it's like delicious at 6 p.m. And For that sure. is not going to happen in 45 minutes in the, you know, right. so right. like a yeah. beef stew too, I think is oh, like yeah. really great. Like, yeah. 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 It definitely has its place in a busy uh, household. For sure. Yeah. I just, I, one other thing I wanted to ask about your, um, your rind did it get all sticky in the crack i knew she was gonna ask that <laughs> it Remember really that? didn't i mean okay good part of it melted i think there was still like a small amount of like real cheese on it but oh. then I, I fished it out and it was okay. fine uh, no problem know. there yeah all yeah. right so all right well thanks ladies and if we have no further comments i will say to our listeners thank you for watching recipe share be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and feel free to share your own in the comments join us next time on recipe share when we will be discussing magnificent mushrooms we're looking forward to seeing what you've been making so thanks for sharing Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with me.